first and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Double honor to the apostles and others of great millstone rule well over the flock. Shalom and salutation to you. I came out here pushing the words of truth and sincerity on Rapal Mouth. Low will this video is edifying. And these are the <clears throat> these last two videos um up here that I watch is the uh motivation for this video I'm making now. Um uh, one by uh called Babylon Will Not Be Healed. And the next one to the left of that is called which I'm about to play now, Watch Which what you watch online is destroying you and this is by um uh guys over at uh earn your leisure earn your leisure is more like a podcast um or interview style and it has uh invest conversation money conversation whatsoever um but and it's really about what he says in the beginning uh, of the video <clears throat> and i'm gonna play it right now and then i'm gonna give some uh comments and then some scriptures low and lives it's out of fire so this just made me think about something because he put a post up yesterday so you have the top 81 billionaires in the world have more wealth than 50 percent of the world's population combined that's 4.6 billion people so 81 people have more wealth than 4.6 billion people we already know that Elon Musk is planning civilization on Mars. Uh, we just covered that Mark Zuckerberg and his wife are planning to er eradicate all human diseases by the year 2100 by using artificial intelligence. And we talked about potential technology to make humans immortal. So it's pretty amazing and discouraging when I go on social media and what I see is debates about fantasy football um, said rapper having beef with said rapper's husband food debates fashion debates and a bunch of other random nonsense that has no real significance in, in life and this is happening in real time right in front of you and you're being consumed with so much nonsense that you don't even even have any concerns or cares about it at all and it's like robbing a bank right in front of you you don't even have to actually hide things it's in it's done in plain sight when you're looking at the, the this is things that are changing the way that the world will operate and directly affect every single human being that's living on planet earth and the vast majority of people are concerned with such unimportant things they wouldn't even register on any of these things that i just talked about level so when you're looking at your life and you're not where you want to be i'm gonna stop right there they go on to give like financial advice and things like that but that's um that's basically the temperament of um wow this place is gonna be out of here real soon uh babylon gotta be destroyed all right for so many more reasons than what he just could name but what he's talking about basically is um why babylon you know why the average person doesn't talk about the, the future and eminent destruction of this place or why they think it could still uh survive Basically, they got their bread and circuses. You go back to Roman history, you recognize that the Romans kept uh, Rome going for a longer period of time than probably would it, would, it would have been had the people uh, revolted against the leaders and the rulers and the Caesars. But the people were fed bread and circuses, and that's what gave them their ability to not look at the serious matters and be entertained. It's basically your everyday average entertainment, which is being flooded through social media flooded through uh your tvs flooded through any screen you have all right but um the scriptures are our keys our keys to life our keys to prosperity why because they tell us how to be saved <laughs> they tell us about salvation and they also tell us how to operate in this lifetime now knowing these things shall be dissolved what man or man ought ye to be is what peter said <clears throat> 
So let me read uh, Proverbs 1 and 20, 27 and 1. It said, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring. And that's all you have in Babylon is like boast. The boasting of the, what you're going to do, who you're going to be, right? They even go on, they, they, they even go on and earn your leisure talk about what you should be doing and you know how to get uh your money up and which would all be well if babylon wouldn't be destroyed all being said if america would never see meet its demise in our lifetime we would we would be right on par with you you know studying on how to uh, invest right and uh gms would be um you know uh, uh, buying a property and doing you know doing move making money moves but as you can see as we're reading there's warnings and instructions that we have to follow if we want salvation. It says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And the scriptures back that up by saying, Sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. Meaning, every day got a certain amount of evil. You ain't even, you know, you you don't even know what uh, the rest of this day will look like, let alone trying to boast of tomorrow. So that's not your sentiment you don't have this whole um i'm gonna you know i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get the bag get the bag get the bag no because you don't even know if you're gonna be around to, to hold on to the bag furthermore this society ain't gonna be around for that bag that bag that frn note going into a little bit of that it's gonna be turned into the cbdc all right it's gonna be turned into a digital currency a digital currency is gonna be picked up and used uh through the application of a motb MOTB is, is going to be implanted in either your right hand or your forehead so that you can buy and sell. These everyday convenience stores, they will be here. Your gas stations will be here. All of these things uh, um, uh, will be here in the modern day. But the currency alone, it will be switched over from cash to cashless. And so, provided you talking about a bag all the time your bag will have to be implemented in your right hand or in your forehead in order for you to do make those moves or both so that's not even the key come to find out riches uh make it themselves wings fly away so proverbs 27 and uh one then we also have here james 4 and 7 submit yourselves as a matter of fact let me jump down to 13 go to now Ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. That sounds familiar. That sounds like the whole platform of on your leisure or any type of investment talk, which, you know, is basically investment will be the prize. It would be the top thing if we were to continue here, if we had a continuing city here, if this was our rest. But it's not. Right, but a lot of people don't know that, so they're still talking like that. That's why you can't be caught up into this, you know, not conform to the to the to this world. Be not conformed. Uh, you you know better. You know what's going to happen to this society. You know how it's, America is going to be lights out soon by thermonuclear fire, because you read and you study and you learn from the prophets of Great Millstone. It's verse fourteen. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor. That appeareth for a little time and then vanish away. And then you you might say, well, that supports the argument of just doing whatever the hell you want to do. Hell, you know, basically, basically we all going to die. And we might as well, well, no, that's where salvation comes in. If you want to die in Babylon and be destroyed, just like the rest of these heathens, just like the rest of these scoffers, go right ahead. You can go ahead and get the bag or die, or you could be broke and die. But salvation is is reported in the scriptures this is why it's called the good news right the good news is that the lord is coming back to return in these end times to deliver his chosen nation uh elect out of the nation of israel so we have hope in that we won't be destroyed when the rest of these people are taken out but we need to continue to do what we're supposed to be doing it says for what is your life it is even a vapor that appear for a time and then vanish away for a for that he ought to say if the lord will we shall live or do this or that but now you rejoice in your boastings all such rejoicing is evil so regardless of how you look at it when you're boasting about money and you're boasting about your moves and you're boasting about your future moves i'm going to be this that and the third five year 10 year 25 year plans projecting out into the future of how established you'll be that 
that such rejoicing is evil because you do not control your future at all. Man's goings is of the Lord. Second Timothy 2 verse 11 says, For the grace of Yahweh that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So this is that beautiful grace that allows us to um, contribute or participate in the salvation during the time of the coming Messiah, which is right around the corner. If you continue in these works, salvation appears through these words, through this truth, teaching us that denying ungodly and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. So that's how we supposed to operate in this present world, denying ungodly and worldly lust. And that goes into the whole what you're going to do with that goes into all of the worldly business, man. Anything worldly, anything where you are completely consumed in everything except for your 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 salvation, your restoration, your your um your job and your duty and your obligation and your labor and your works. All right, and your faith. Everything outside of there, which you know, you take a time out here, you take a time out here, and you're right, you take a mental break. We're on, we're, we're we're human, so to speak. So we going uh, uh, you know, too much studying is, is the scripture says, like a weariness of flesh. You go, you can go overboard, right? You can try to be over righteous and study 24 hours a day or 23, and you'll sleep one hour, right? That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about denying ungodly and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Let's get some of the um translations, see what it says here. It says, ESV, to live. It says, training us to renounce ungodly and worldly passions. Once again, you're passionate about making money. We get it. You're passionate about your teams. We get it. We're passionate about things. But you also have to learn how to deny yourself certain things, man. If you lose your mind because you got the camp, uh, you know, camp ended after the game ended and your mind wasn't there, that means you cannot deny yourself. You're not denying yourself. And you have to be instructed. It says instructed. It says trained, training us, teaching us. So you learn these things. And you're not going to have it right off the bat. But you need to put these things into practice and into motion because they're helpful for you. It says training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. And that's the emphasis on that present age, this world that we in right now, presently. What, how are you denying things presently? Are you living uh, sober-minded presently? All right? Let's continue. And sober goes into um, being sound, right? Uh, sound, basically that soundness in the word and soundness in faith uh, is what sober-minded is all about. Proverbs 21 and 17 says, He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. And they go on to say um, about how rich people yeah they they're known to invest and in, put their money in investments they don't even live in mu as much pleasure as the average poor person does because the truth is he that love pleasure shall be a poor man you in order to be pleased by everything you got to spend this is a consumer economy a consumer world you have to buy your pleasure here most people don't understand you can just take your dog for a walk on a trail and get just as much enjoyment out of that satisfaction than you can take than you do when you take a trip to Cabo San Lucas for two thousand dollars uh twice a year or something crazy. You don't need to you don't need to do that. More importantly, we in these last days. So we denying all over the place. We denying brothers we denied getting higher paying jobs because they asked us to shave our beards. We denied going on vacations because it was during the time of camp. We denied all of these things already. We just have to continue to deny. All right, let's continue. Luke 16 and 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in unrighteous mammon, which is money who will commit to your trust the true riches and this is where um even earn your leisure don't understand there's true riches that this that money can't buy you there's true riches you see here in the niv so if you have been 
have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches? The idea again, what are these true riches? What would be the true riches? Here's some um, precepts just to help me along. This is Proverbs 8 and 18. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. What's the, what's the talking about? This word. These words, man. This is what that is. Luke 18 and 22 says, Now when Yahweh shall heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast. That's his un unrighteous mammon. And distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. All right, this go even goes hand in hand with what the Apostle Hall was talking about today, dealing with Nate. If he was technically keeping the law, 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 as they say they would, they would distribute to the necessity of the saints, a.k.a. they would financially back up brothers, even whether regardless of you in your camp, out of camp, a different camp, you would financially back up believers with bread. You wouldn't just consider, you know, be in a situation where you got all of the Louis bags and your brother is struggling. You know, there would be no struggling amongst them. But that's not that it's they're hypocritical in their speech. So uh, Yahweh told his rich man to sell all he has and distribute unto the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. And this is what people aren't familiar with. They're heaping, hoarding up treasures here on earth. Luke 12 and 33, sell that ye gave, sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bag which wax not old, and treasures in heaven that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupt. So that's the idea, that you want the real, true riches. There are true riches that they don't know anything about, they don't speak about. And that's why they consumed with the unrighteous mammon of this world. And they're not even loyal with that. It goes on to say, and if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, what who should give you that which is your own? So you, and it goes on to say, no man, no servant can serve two masters, for he will, he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve your hour and mammon. Mammon is money. So you just, just no room for it. Now, using it, that's wisdom. Um, applying, uh, uh, how to use money to invest or make more you know more money and 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 make your money double and triple that's that's wisdom um serving money man meaning every move you make in your life is designated to how how to make more money or hold on to your money that is not wisdom plainly because now you are a servant to that mammon and that mammon is where moth and rust corrupt you when the cbdc is established that digital currency you can kiss all your side hustles away, man. All right, you you can kiss away um, uh, um, salvation. You just pissed away your chance at salvation by taking an implant, uh, allowing them to implant you with their with their um, radio frequency ID. See here, and so as as time progresses, you're gonna see more and more clearly. That the words of the Lord and the prophecies of Yahweh Bashmiel Shah are standing. Alright, let's continue a few more and then we out of here. Hebrews 13 and 14 says, But we hit but here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Come. This is um, Micah 2 and 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with the sword destruction. There's the arise and depart, which is in your mind. You're not, you don't have to not have to physically leave this place. That's why salvation, Yahweh shall draw near. It comes near to us. Yahweh shall coming down in the clouds, right? That and saying enter into the chambers. So we'll we'll physically leave um, Babylon, America, and uh, be delivered out of here when the thermonuclear fire um, begins during World War Three. It says, for this is not your rest. So you can't have any peace. Peace is rest. Rest is peace. Rest is pleasure. You really can't have it. As long as you uh, are, are ruled over by an unlawful, unruly man, uh, hateful for sake of the Most High, uh, like Esau, Edom, you will not have rest. You'll be polluted and destroyed. Finishing off with Matthew 5 and 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. 
and the meek aren't the ones that w who are loaded with cash loaded with frns the meek are the ones who are suffering right now because uh they're doing the will and the bidding of the heavenly father they're doing his will you can't just be meek and don't know nothing about the lord that's not how it works your, your meek your meekness comes from the fact that you have sacrificed everything that you might be able to make or obtain in this world for the next lifetime again like the like this like your house shop pointed out if you um if you are good you would sell all the riches that you have um distribute them unto the poor and then come and follow me so that you can have true riches um but of course we know that they didn't do that don't be attached to your riches don't be attached to anything anything that you could replace in the stead of what riches is to some be some people, anything that you can replace, uh, do not do not put it there. Do not love it. Replace riches or whatever is important to you. Replace it with this truth, and watch and see as the meat begin to be blessed with this with with the inheritance of the world to come. Not this present world, but the world to come, which is an everlasting life that cannot be taken out and destroyed. Love on this video is edifying. Till next time, shalom.